What up, Booktornet? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Internets. Hello. I'm Mikey. I'm Janella, and this is his shelf. My shelf. Her shelf. <laughs> Stupid. And today we're coming at you with our first ever book review. That is a book that we've both read and have decided to jointly review. Today's mm -hmm. pick is The Beautiful Bureaucrat by Helen Phillips. Yes. It's such an odd, interesting, just mind fucky kind of book. Yeah, it was great. We found out about this book on the Book Riot podcast. They have a sub podcast called All the Books where they cover new books that are being released uh, every week and they were raving about this book. I feel like they're pretty choosy about what they want to cover and the fact that they covered this book kind of caught my attention, did some research, looked good, and then I think that you wanted to read it mm -hmm. too. And so we went to the old B&N &N and ordered it, because they didn't have it in stock. And it showed up a couple days later. And she devoured it almost immediately, and it took me until yesterday to get around to reading it. But I managed to bust through it in about a night, so it's really short, about like 160 pages or so. It's a quick read, but really, really so much happens. Yeah, it's great. I loved it. What did you think about it? It was such a trip. It was seriously, it was really, really entertaining. I really enjoyed it. That's definitely probably on my, uh, somewhere up at the top of my favorite books of this year, I think. Yeah, it's, I really, I liked it. Um, I remember reading it when, gosh, swimming, I think we were swimming, yeah. and I was reading it, and uh, I really loved it. I'm a little bit of a slower reader than Mikey. Mikey's a very, very quick reader. Um, but no, he busted through it and yeah, like a night, very quick. Um, but he, Michael, is going to give a little synopsis of it. Because I'm not very good at those. I'll do my best. You can do it. <laughs> Let me get uh, <laughs> uh, situated uh, in my throat. <laughs> Stituated, you mean? Situ oh, good one. <laughs> Situated. Situated. <laughs> so the book is kind of, uh, they, it's like our world. It's very familiar, but slightly off is the way I've heard it described. And so it, it focuses on this woman named Josephine and her husband, who's named, get this, Joseph. Original. And uh, they're a down-on-their-luck couple. They uh, have just moved to this new city. They've kind of been wandering, I suppose, is what I got from it, kind of finding a place to live. They're broke, and they're kind of just searching for jobs anywhere. And so Joseph has a job, and Josephine is in the middle of this job interview with this strange company, and the building has uh, just the letters A and Z stacked, to e stacked on top of each other. And so she's in this interview with a guy... Uh, who she names aptly the man with the bad breath. He's very enigmatic, very, uh, just very almost faceless. He, this is how she describes him. And so she's pretty much hired on the spot, and it's a data entry job. Just all this gibberish on this page. And she literally has one job, which is to type in a number, verify that what's on the computer screen is the same as on the paper, and uh, that's it. She does that day in, day out. Uh, and it's great. It's not a great paying job, but more money in their bank account. They're moving around to a bunch of different places in the city doing little sublets. Yeah, sublets. And they're very, very bad. They're not very nice places. They describe one as the jungle, which is kind of yeah. plants all over the place. They have one in the basement. Uh, it's cockroaches infestation. Ugh. Cockroaches. Oh. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. I so didn't, I didn't even get that. I didn't get any of this, really. I don't understand. I thought that was a lot. I don't wasp. think the cover, I don't think the cover really, I mean, they mention pomegranates, but that's it. Like, yeah. I don't. High five for that. Continue. And so, uh, as Josephine, she notices right off the bat that things are really, really weird at this place. There's this constant, like, droning of, of typewriters going on in the background. Uh, but there's very, very rarely does she ever see people out and about in the, in the office. And so, uh, 
she runs into this woman who she becomes friends with. Her name is Trishiphany, which apparently her parents couldn't decide between Trisha and Tiffany, so they combined them into Trishiphany. <laughs> and uh, so Trishiphany is kind of a supervisor. She works in the Department of Corrections, I believe they call it. And so, if there's ever anything that needs to be changed, Trish, if he comes around and... And she was very, she's very, very bubbly and kind of like this weird character that's just, well, everything is like droning and very quiet. Dull and, and kind of, Yeah, you know. she's like, um, just this pop of energy kind of thing. Very but, perky. Yeah, but it's kind of like this weird fake perky where she's kind of like paid to be that way this is what I kind of got from it um but she kind of yeah she kind of reminded me of a mix between when I was reading it I got a mix between of like Glinda from Wicked and I don't know if you're gonna get that reference and then um what's her bucket from Hunger Games the um I don't know her name I don't either but she's got the I'll put a picture in here <laughs> But she just kind of, like, reminded me of, like, if you were to get those two people and, like, put them together, that's what I was picturing. But that's just me. She's she's very strange. She feels almost out of place in this in this company. Mm -hmm. And so as, uh, as Josephine is doing her job and uh, she's kind of starting to more and more question what's happening, there's strange things, she's getting really strange feelings there and... So, Josephine, as she does her job, she's kind of becoming curious as to what exactly she's doing there. Uh, and so, things start kind of becoming very weird. She kind of tries to explore the place a little bit more. She is, uh, they have an elevator in the building that only lets her off on certain floors. She can't get to other places to kind of dig a little deeper into it. And, uh... She slowly starts discovering just exactly what it is she's doing there, and it's kind of it, it affects her in such an intense way, and it uh it kind of starts triggering these very strange, almost I don't know what would you describe them as, just f fits of kind of paranoia almost. She yeah. feels like she's being followed, and uh, it 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 all kind of comes to a head when Joseph disappears one night, and she can't get a hold of him, and. They, uh, they can't figure out what's what's going on, basically. She has, you know, assumes the worst, different different things. Oh, is he cheating on me? Oh, yeah. is he going to show up dead? Yeah, she Or was... not show up at all because he's dead? Ah! Um, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, out of nowhere he just disappears. And so, yeah, as any person who cares about their significant other, usually... Uh, would start worrying, like, yeah, is he cheating on me? What's going on? What's happening? And the whole time she has to go back to these, like, little shitty sublets mm -hmm. and live in them while he's off doing who knows what. Um, so, but things happen to where she ends up finding out what she's entering and it comes to this huge climax and it does not let you down. I remember when you were finishing it last night, you were, like, audible about it. I was guessing, like, uh, as we were getting, as I was getting to the end, I kept being like, this is gonna happen, I know this is gonna happen, and she just says, you I just can't tell you how I to can't. finish it yourself. You just gotta read it, Michael. No, and, uh, yeah, but he's usually a pretty quiet reader, <laughs> but, um, no, you were, you, you know, you weren't vocal about it, but you definitely were, I think you were really into it. No, it was definitely, this one is, is definitely pretty high up on my list of some of my favorites of the year it's it's definitely kind of something right up my alley it's definitely not going to be a book for everybody but it's it's something odd and it's 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 very very surreal and i think that's really what i like where things are feel familiar but are slightly different to the point of being just very very strange this whole book was strange mm -hmm. it's definitely a very i mean for a first book this is this is pretty awesome it's such an interesting i i can't say i've ever heard of anything mm -mm. like this so i definitely think it's pretty unique um you just it's so eerie this whole book has an has a, a just a feel of creepiness and you feel dirty reading it it's yeah. just really strange it's they describe like of all their terrible little sublet situations you know turn on the bath and 
water, black water bubbles up out of the drains and cockroaches crawling around everywhere. It's just everywhere. It's very grimy and uh, it's, 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 you feel bad for these people living in their, in their terrible places. And, and then she has to go to work mm -hmm. and go work in a, in a room with no windows and just gross. It's not gross, but it's so minimalistic that mm -hmm. it is almost gross how minimalistic it is. You know, she can't go outside to have lunch. She has to eat it in her office. Um, and just, you know, files on top of files on top of files. There's no end in sight. And going home at the end of the day feeling like you didn't really accomplish anything at work is one of the worst feelings. Um, I think, and really, that was, you know, all of that just plays more and more into her, her head games and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's definitely, I thought it was interesting, you kind of see her spiral downwards into strange... Mania. Yeah, just how she she talks about how, uh, you know, she's coming home every day and her eyes are just bloodshot. Yeah. And, and she sees on the walls, like, they're this weird pink color and she feels like she's seeing scratch marks almost, like, you know, just, and it's so, it's so weird. It is the weirdest thing. It's just, this is one of those, it just makes you kind of think and just wonder what the hell did I just read, and that's what I absolutely loved about it. It was just such a trip. But if you were to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate it? Let's do the math. Book, Goodreads, 4 out of 5. So you want to do 4 out of 5? It's an 8 out of 10. Okay. 4 out of 5. Yeah, I could get. I could get seven or eight out of ten. I would. I say. would say for me, with seven out of ten, I could definitely see this being more of a book for you, um, just based on what you like to read. Mm -hmm. Me, with a seven out of ten, I still really did enjoy, it and I still would recommend it to people. But um, you definitely have to be sure you're recommending it to the right person who doesn't want all the facts just laid out for them. It's definitely one where you kind of have to think about it a little bit and think about like. Well, what does this mean? What does this mean? There's some word play in here that's really interesting. Lots of, yeah, they they take words, everyday words, and then scramble them up into like anagrams, yeah, and then, or just things that sound similar. It's just very strange. It's yeah. just weird, like you described as like a nervous tick almost. It yeah, kinda happens when she's in her own head and. It's very, very odd. Yeah, it's almost like this, yeah, the, like what you're saying, the nervous tick thing. It's like, yeah, how she grounds herself mm -hmm. in, in the world that she's in. Um, like I said, I would do 7 out of 10. Mikey's going to do about 7 or 8 out of I'm going to call it a solid 7 and a half. There you go. Definitely a great, great debut. I'm, I kind of want to go and find her short story collections that she's had out. Yeah, I saw that you put that on And Grace. I actually found out that I think they're putting out another one next year, which is going to be pretty cool, I think. Holla! But anyways, yeah, if you are looking for a book that is kind of a mind trip. Um, Not to mention a quick read. Very quick. It's good if you're trying, want to try something new. You want to get out of a book slump. Um, you need kind of a fun, funky book, you know, to recommend to friends or family or, you know, the clerk at Safeway. I don't know. I was going to say Blockbuster, but that was way <laughs> off. <laughs> uh Definitely pick up Beautiful Bureaucrat. I really... Definitely worth a read. Definitely worth your time. Sweet. All right. And with that, I think we're going to head down to Hollywood Video. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Stitchers. A more broad... Yes. ...spectrum of <laughs> reading things. Definitely. And we're going to have fun while doing it.